I went on, could have been record thing like my boy Jack Funny. And I went on there and he turned me down and he was acting like he ain't know who I was or nothing. Then I just seen him at the BT where he's like, bro, you going crazy. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, bro, I was just on could have been He's like, you was? So people look over you because you ain't really. But when I start doing 15, 20 videos a week and I'm in everybody's face, now they like, you feel me? You get what I'm trying to say? Because mm -hmm. that's like even a little Baby situation. Bro, I met Lil Baby like two times before. He's like, bro, I'm a fan of you. And I'm looking at like, bro, I remember one time, like, I was in the store. I pulled out my phone and one of his boys like tried to smack the phone on my hand. They thought I was trying to record him. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then like, it was just like, we was in LA though. You feel me? And I like, you know what I'm saying? And he ain't even, he ain't even know I was a dude that like, clean, you know what I'm saying? It's just that like, people don't really know. You so you don't never take like none of it personal? Cause some no. I be. Bro, I've been like, we, bro. We still hear me. We got feelings. You know why? Because I got tough skin. I'm from Detroit, Michigan, and I know how to fake it till I make it. And at the end of the day, I done knocked on racist people's door where they was like, get off my porch, nigga. I said, what that gay? You owe me $5. Mm. And they bust out laughing and bought my product. So I already know when I'm in Rome, do as a Rome. It's like, I, and then I ain't go, to, just because a person nasty or they overlook me, I'm not going to overlook nobody. I ain't go, you know what I mean? That's why I get my blessings because I don't on the small people. You feel me? Because nobody's small to me. You know what I'm saying? We all got 24 hours in our day. We all put our pants on the same way. Just like the, uh, Wallow said, he said, as soon as you get up and you wake up and God bless you to see another day, you got another opportunity to chase your dream. So why would I try to on somebody else for trying to chase their dream mm -hmm. when we all and on this earth for one purpose and that's to be great. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, they don't understand that. <laughs>
I, I started doing door to door because I was still in like when I was bad, you know how we a product of our environment and we like, you know what I'm saying? We I was hitting licks and we call it hitting licks, but I really was like stealing because I was stealing from my grandma, my mama. So friend. your mom's the like, yeah, I was like hitting licks <laughs> on them. You feel me? Like, you know what I'm saying? It was crazy. I, man, it you was, were savage, bro. So yeah, I was just, man, I was just corruptive and like in Detroit, like you a product of your environment. You think only how you can make it if you like an athlete or you know, um, you a rapper. Or selling drugs, like the negative, the peer pressure stuff, you feel me? So I was like, I ain't want to get into that. So I was still, and I was like hitting licks and, you know what I'm saying, breaking into malls, like taking outfits and selling it to drug dealers, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's how, like, that was like my little hustle. But after that. Oh, you my, was a neighborhood booster? Yeah, I was doing that for okay. a little while. Then I got into like shoveling snow, raking leaves, pumping gas, and then I got into door to door my, um, my friend, like, he taught me how to play basketball. He was like, bro, this is Detroit News and Free Press you can make. You know what I'm saying? So I started doing that at, like, 12. Wait, I, was that newspaper? Yeah, I was selling newspapers door-to-door -door in, like, Michigan. I wasn't working Detroit. I was working, like, the suburbs. How much was the, the newspaper? It had to be, like, 25 cents back then. No, back in the day, it was, it was like, like a dollar or something. It was like a dollar. Like you, but we were signing people up for years, like like a year subscription, you know what I'm saying? Oh. So you could do like weekly. So what we used to do, though, we used to have a hustle with that, too, because we knew that the dude that was dropping us off, he made money whether we sold or not. You feel me? Right. So we would write up fake sales. We would make up like a bill you later. Like if you get a bill you later, you get a dollar for that. Mm. So we would just write Albert Einstein, put this address on there and bill him later. And like we would do like 15, 20. Then we get like 20, 30 dollars a day just off fake. You know what I'm saying? And then we had the real people that we was actually selling. Like we sell them. We get like five dollars if they do like a week. You get like ten dollars if they do a month, and but the year you wanted to get, cause you get like fifty dollars. But you was getting that every, you know what I'm saying, every sale. And that's when I found out, like besides actors and entertainers, the highest paid people in the world was salespeople. Cause I remember I was making like five hundred dollars a week at mm -hmm. twelve years old. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Just off of that little hustle. And I remember telling myself that I'd never punch a clock unless I swung on Flavor Flay, cause I like I was tasting. The money, and I wasn't selling drugs or doing negative things, you feel me? Mm -hmm. I ain't had to steal no more. I'm buying Jordans now. I'm buying Anichi, you know what I'm saying? Pelly Pell, stuff like that, you feel me? Yeah. And I used to have to go in to Mars and take, you know what I mean? So so wait, well, I'm, I'm curious, though, why didn't... What kept you doing door-to-door -door and not wanting to do another sales type of job? Because it's, sales is a big market. Yeah, but I didn't know no other sales, you feel me? Mm -hmm. When I was in Detroit, that's what thing that... I mean, that's one thing that I learned... Like, even when I did the cleaner door-to-door, -door, like, I was so locked in with that, I didn't think, because, like, one thing I learned when you in Rome do as a Rome is I was so locked in that you couldn't recruit me to do nothing. I had people trying to recruit me to sell cars, sell life insurance, sell real estate, but I was so locked in with this company out, because this company taught me how to make my first $5,000 in a week, you feel me? Yeah. Like, I, in Detroit, I only knew drug dealers that was making money, or rap, you know what I'm saying? I'm making five, I'm, I turned to a $20 bottle the, uh, that I was selling to making five thousand dollars, I bought my first car, bought my first car. You know what I mean? So yeah. I was like, I ain't, if about it ain't to, broke. Don't I fix was, it. yeah, I was loyal to the company. You feel me? So I wasn't about to go nowhere else because the grass. They always say the grass greener somewhere else, but I'm looking at like if it was greener, I would have went to them first before this company. You know what I mean? No facts. So so wait, at twelve you was doing a newspaper. Yeah, I did that to like twelve to fourteen. Then I got a growth spurt. I went from like five six to like six one. Then I started taking basketball serious, you feel me? Then I got to about 6'4", and then my grandmother died. Then that's when I dropped out of high school my senior year, and I worked for Burger King like 30 minutes, and then my mom ended up putting me out because <laughs> she was like, you got to get a job. But you, were, you, was at, you was at Burger King? Yeah, but I, I, I just did it just so I wouldn't get put out because oh. I, I had that mindset that, I, like I said, I ain't going to punch a clock unless, I, you know, the Flavor Flay story. So. Damn, wait, 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 wait. So your, 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 your grandmother passed. Yeah, my, my grandmother passed. Um, like my senior year of high school, I was like 17 going on 18. She passed like, it was like this, like when school started, it was around like, no, it was basketball season. So it had to be like around like December or January. And then... And you just dropped out yeah, with like... Yeah, because my mom wanted me to finish school, but she ended up putting me out around like summertime, like right when I ain't finished school. But before that though, when your grandmother passed, you just dropped out or you just start acting out? No, school? I just started missing school. You feel me? You know how I'd be like, days was going, I missed school, I was depressed, I wasn't going, you know what I mean? Then I wasn't doing the door to door. And then after that, she like gave me breaks. She kept talking to me like, I know he going through it because I'm going through it. This is her mom, you feel me? And I was like my grand, grandma favor. And she was like... She was like the backbone to the family. She the one to really install like confidence and told me that I was this great person that nobody in my family believed that I was. She was like, I'm telling you special. You got something that the world going, you know what I'm saying? She was like, so you got to have that nowadays. You don't got really people that really big you up and really build the confidence. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm installing in my kids now. Mm. You feel me? Because I ain't had that growing up. My grandma, 
was the only person that believed in me when I ain't believing myself. My mama said, you going to be in jail. You're going to be dead. You ain't going to make it past 21. You know what I'm saying? And then my mom didn't even like sales. I remember when I first was doing door to door and I was like, mom, I'm about to do this door to door job. She's like, no, you ain't. Somebody going to kidnap you and snatch you in their house. Then she saw that first paycheck. She's like, keep doing it. Keep doing it. Now you can pay the light bill. You can pay the sales. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so my, but my, my mom didn't believe in sales and now she is a salesperson. You feel me? Mm. But this came from my grandmother. I like, that was my why. You feel me? So. It was like, it was crazy. So when she left, like a part of me left, I just got depressed. I ain't had that friend no more, you feel me? So yeah. that's, I just it was going through it, you know? So you missing school. So, and then you get kicked out and then you like, y'all need a job. Yeah, so I'm not I doing living anything. house to house. And that's one thing, you can't really live with family because you, you eating their food and you breathing. If you breathe the wrong way, they gonna, Yo, you know facts. what I'm saying? So, they, when, so I was living house to house for probably like a couple weeks. And then my older brother, he was like, bro, remember that job you was doing door to door the newspaper when you was like 12, you was making like $500. He was like, look, my friend, he make like $1,000 a week. You probably go crush it. So I was scared to travel because when I was doing door to door in Detroit, it was in Detroit. I ain't about to go. They, they was like, they go to California, you know, Chicago, you know, New York. They go to state to state. And I'm like, bro, I ain't about to, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then he was like, I'm going to go with you. And he talked me into going. And I remember my first week, I made like $1,000 like in like three days, you feel me? Damn. So I, I kept doing it. I, I went from doing it like a week, a month, to a year, to two years, to five years, to 10 years. I was like, you know what I'm saying? I just kept doing it. Wait, so at 12, right, were you, you wasn't popular or anything? Cause, no. Because I only think I asked that because like I know like I did door-to-door -door too, right? Like yeah. I did like roof sales. I didn't have every job in this plan, if you think about it, to be honest, right? Right, right. But one thing about it is, once you start to get some clout, yeah. that's when you, that's when the, the second thoughts, the second, second thoughts come in, like, man, I don't want these yeah. people going to know me, you <laughs> know what I'm saying? I wasn't, hell no, I wasn't viral at 12, like, I ain't get viral till I was about 23, 24, probably 25. Okay. Yeah. Nah, because even then, like, I, I played football, so like, we ain't go door to door, yeah. but we used to be on the, um, on the street selling, like, up, uh, like, uh, doing... The fundraiser. Fundraiser, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. We used to wash people's cars yeah. or like wash people's windows yeah, or like yeah. ask for money and shit. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't even want to do that, to be honest, because right. like, bro, like at 12, I, I think I had a little name. So I wasn't like who I am <laughs> yeah, now, but still, yeah. like I'm in Baltimore, like, man. Right, right, right. Why, you see yeah. me on the corner. No, like, Baltimore, they got like the water boys and yeah. they got the people that wash your windows and yeah, stuff. Yeah, but this like, is before that. See, yeah. the water boys is something. Yeah, because they in Atlanta now too. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, water boys is like last six, seven years. Right. Like when we was coming up, we used to pump gas. Yeah. So, like, that's how I got my first visor for football. Yeah. I used to uh, go to the gas station and ask that I pump your gas. And right. people give me a dollar and shit like that. But, nah, man, that shit crazy. So, at 12, what made you good at 12? Before we even get to 17, 18. Yeah, so that's that's a, that's a great question. So, that remember I was telling you when I first did it, I wanted to quit because they gave me this speech. And I'm like, man, I ain't Martin Luther King. I ain't about to... I ain't got no speech for them. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. then I looked at, it was lying to these people. I'm telling them I'm working towards a college education. I, like I told you, my grandma, I mean, my mom couldn't afford me no basketball shoes. That's the only reason why I signed up for that door-to-door -door job. So my little short-term goal was I'm going to work this one week, get the little 50 bucks, go buy me some shoes. You feel me? But it ain't work out because once I started, I got the door-to-door -door job while I was making three, four, five hundred dollars $500 a week, I kept doing it. You feel me? But how I got good is because... I didn't go off of what they wanted me to do. The company gave us a speech that we had to read and a lot of the customers. When I had a gut feeling like this ain't going to work, I'm going to just make people laugh or crack jokes, and that's how I was. And then when I grew up, I'm, I'm like I was born in the 80s, so I grew up listening to like Nas, Lil Wayne, Jay-Z, Eminem, you know what I'm saying? So how they was putting words together and metaphors, I took that and put that into rhyming with the, you know, like with my jokes. That was like my inspiration, you feel me? Like all the way to like, even now, like the JD Kiss, the Fabulous, to you know what I'm saying, the Meek Mills, Rick Ross, like everybody that they got like metaphors. Mm -hmm. I'm like a fan because that's how my like when I if you see you, you like everybody be like, man, you should rap when I do like my little videos because that 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 was my inspiration. Like anybody that got punchlines, I'm like, oh yeah, that's Lloyd Banks. To you know what I'm saying. So you was always like witty. From yeah, the beginning, because I was witty just because of off what, what I put. Because like that's even like this generation nowadays. Like whatever you like when I was growing up, like I was so locked in with like Lil Wayne. I wanted to be Lil Wayne. You feel me? Yeah. It's like, you know what I'm saying? That's why I had a lot of kids. I, like I got ten kids. They like eating. I love feeding them because he he inspired me to have a lot of kids. You know what I'm saying? I'm like this nigga got oh, ten damn. kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, but it, it's like he was like that was like my idol. Like I'm like this dude because like. He was like one of a kind. Nobody wasn't saying what he was saying. You know what I mean? And it's like, like my kids, like, like I got kids that deal with mental health now because they favorite rapper is Juice World or NBA mm -hmm. Youngboy. And they they be preaching about, I don't love myself. I, I hate my, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, 
like they want to be them so bad that they want to feel like them. You feel what I'm trying to say? Mm. So it's like it was different. But I was so locked in with them that I started freestyling and writing down jokes. You feel me? Mm. And I say stuff that like people would be like, man, that because certain like I have people, even celebrities, when I did skits like Timberland, when I first met Timberland, he's like, bro, I watched your video like eight times before I got this punchline. I didn't even know you said that. You get what I'm saying? Mm. And I remember me listening to a Jay-Z bar or a Lil Wayne song. I'd be like, damn, I didn't even know he said that. And I done heard this song 15 times. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So it's like that's how locked in I was because what I was putting in my system. You feel what I mean? Mm. And I was just putting it out in the world, and I was like different, you know? At 12 years old, do you remember your first sale that went that went well, that, that was good? Yeah, my first. I remember like You yesterday. remember your first, your line? Yeah, so that's what's crazy. Before I became a salesperson, I was they had me, they hired me as a paper route dude. So the paper route dude was basically like we was only gonna make fifty dollars a week, you feel me? Mm -hmm. We was working off a salary. That's why I said I never punch a clock because you could work eight days a week, you could be working you made that 24 same. hours and you still getting fifty dollars at the end of the week. You could deliver a thousand papers. Yep. At the end of the week, I was getting fifty bucks. So anyway, we one of my friends was pushing the wagon and I'm throwing a paper at the addresses and we threw the paper at this wrong address. This is my first day out, like T Grizzly, straight up. Like, you know what I mean? And we throw the paper at the wrong dude house, and it's like a white dude. So we work in a predominantly white area because we from the hood. We from Detroit, but we ain't working Detroit because they'll rob you, whatever. So we was going out to the suburbs, like the middle class rich people with, you know what I'm saying? They got money. So we threw the paper to the dude address. He come outside before we even get to the next door. He start cussing us out. Motherfucker, get off my property. I'm next time you throw. The next person coming to my door from this company, y'all scams, y'all. I canceled this subscription like a year ago. You see all these papers I got. He just snapping on it. So me and my coworker looking at him, and the first thing you see your perception is your reality. Because we looking like if he was black, we probably wouldn't have had his mindset. But by us being black and he white, we like this dude racist. You know what I'm saying? If we is white, I bet you want to talk to us like that. So my friend was ready to fight him. I'm like, man, I got this, I got this. Because I'm looking at like you a little kid. He gonna beat us up. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm, I'm gonna just kill him with um. Attacking oh, yes. diplomacy. Watch this. I said, sir, can I ask you a question? He was like, what? I said, you got kids? He was like, yeah. I said, if two of your kids was playing and one broke the glass, you ain't going to spank both of them, right? Mm. I'm 12 years old. I swear to God, because I was using this shit on my mom. Excuse my French, my tiny. But anyway, I was like, if two of your kids was playing and one broke the glass, you ain't going to spank both of them, right? He was like, no. Nah. I was like, well, you shouldn't spank us for the bad performance. Let me just call my stupid advisor and <laughs> see if we can upgrade you like Beyonce. And I swear to God, off me calling my company a stupid and he started laughing off that, we end up upgrading him, and he got, like, another year subscription. So I end up making, so I was going to make $50 that week. I end up making, like, $55 off that one sale. You get mm, what I'm saying? Because yeah. they changed me from a paper route being on a salary to a salesman. They was like, oh, this dude know how to talk. You feel me? And then at 12 years old, I was reading, like, Think and Grow Rich. I was reading books and stuff. You feel me? So I was already locked in mentally. You know what I'm saying? I was stronger than the Holy Ghost mentally. So I was already prepared for whatever that was coming with me, you know what I'm saying? Damn, so... Being from Detroit, like, if you can make it, like, you know what I'm saying? I, I already had the confidence, and that's why I tell people, like, I got my kids going door-to-door, -door. like, we... Because it teach you something that you, like... It, like, I learned so much stuff knocking on doors that I never even learned in school. Like, you learn financial literacy. You learn how to love yourself. It's so much stuff you learn that they don't teach you in school. Mm. Teach you about credit, all type of stuff, because you're dealing with the smartest people in the world. I'm knocking on billionaire doors, rich people that has something to do with NASA, or, you know what I'm saying, has something to do with technology. You know what I mean? You go to school, they ain't teaching you that. They teach you how to be in depth, how to work for people, how to, you know what I mean? You know how it is. Mm -hmm. Like, so, yeah. But So, uh, what I will say is, like, you can have confidence and still get nervous when you don't have the experience. Yeah, but like, that's why experience is the best teacher. That's why you got to just do it. Because you got, you know what I'm saying, a pair of lips to say anything. And that, that's why one of my favorite sayings is that I stop listening to people say and watch what they do. Because, like, I ain't going to never tell nobody to do something that I never did, especially when it comes to my kids. You feel me? I, I I show my kids first. Like, I got this saying when I take my kids to doors before I train them or anybody when I go out. Because people pay me. Like hundreds, like they pay me like like thousands of dollars to go train and teach people how to sell. And I always tell people when I go out in the field with them before I knock on the door, I said, if I laugh, you laugh. If I high five this customer, you high five this customer. If I slap this customer, you slap me because this ain't supposed to happen. Because <laughs> I'm going to teach you the three L's to look, listen, and learn. And once I show you how easy it is, it's like... It's like you getting trained by LeBron James in basketball. You feel me? He's showing you how easy it is. You're going to have confidence. Be like, oh, I could do it too. You know what I mean? Like when Barack Obama first became the first black president, everybody felt like, now nah, I could be a president too. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Like when you heard that first song, you're like, oh, I can rap. I could rap. You know, it's the same thing. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's all about me. I show and tell because somebody showed me how to do it. But they brought the best out of me because of the simple fact 
I had people like my grandmother around me that was telling me I'm great every day. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That's how I'm doing this with my son right now. I got a son, he just turned 18. He he didn't believe he could score 55 points in high school because I got that out of him. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm like, bro, you great. You could be better than LeBron James. You could be better than, because how many people LeBron, LeBron James' mama or coach was telling him he could be better than Michael Jordan. You know what I'm saying? We don't got that too much of that right now. We got too much hating going on, black on black shit. You know what I'm saying? No, if we stick together like butt cheeks, no diddy though, but you know what I'm saying? It'd be way more better. We our culture is is one of a kind, bro. Everybody wanna be us, you know what I'm saying? But the thing is that we don't want to be us, you know what I'm saying? Mm, that's a fact. Yeah, no, that's so. a fact. But wait, I'm, I'm I'm trying to figure out the confidence part, right? Because like going into new neighborhoods, people that don't look like you, people that you're you're not used to seeing, right? You still had yeah, to Yeah, because you got you got stinking thinking. See, I'm saying the best thing for people to do before they even knock on doors start reading books. Mm. I was reading like the magic of thinking big. Think and Grow Rich. Man, I got my kids reading Rich Dead, Poor Dead, and How to Win Friends and Fools People. So they reading this stuff, and then it'll do something to their confidence off the rip. You know mm, what I'm saying? Yeah, thanks. It's like you you ain't ever read nothing start getting chills in your body. No, like, you're right. And you I, just I be that. one with the book. You feel yeah. me? So now you could take over a nation. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I was doing. I was reading stuff, and, and when it start, it's easy to do it as a little kid, because when you a little kid, you got this imagination. I remember when I was a little kid, I used to tell my mom, I can jump on an airplane. While mm. I was already in the sky. How the fuck I'm going to jump on an airplane while it's in the sky? No, you're you know what I'm saying? Right. So, I, so, so it's like when you a little kid, you got this. When we grown and we start getting comfortable with failure, it's like we start doubting ourselves. You know what I'm saying? But when you got that imagination as a little kid, you start, man, you know how kids is. They be saying they can be what they want. When we, remember Jay-Z even said that when I was kids, I used to point at that car like, that's my car. Mm -hmm. My kids do it right now. They see a Lamborghini or something. That's mine. That's my, you know what I'm saying? Like when we grown, we we hating on the motherfucker that got that. You feel me? Like, oh, this no, you know what nah, I mean? No, you right. I, I remember so when I was. So it's like it's all about the like you gotta lock in early. No, nah, I remember mean, when I was coming up, I used to be like, uh, I used to say crazy shit like, man, my first house gonna be in the projects. Like See? I'm gonna buy a house in the yeah. projects. Like, what? Like that don't even make sense. It's the imagination though. Yeah. You feel me? Or no, nah, can't. Nah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, cause I didn't. But again, we sometimes we're a slave to our environment though, right? So you learned to to, to read a book that got you out your environment. They said if you yeah, want to travel yeah. around the world, you have no money, read a book. Yeah. But I'm, I'm assuming your grandmother got you into that. No, the, the sales people got me into that. So when I got into sales early. Okay. You feel what I'm saying? So when you started selling, then you like, I need yeah, to read books. Yeah, they was like, you need to read. Because I was, I was like, I, I'm a product of my environment. I'm thinking negative shit. You know what I'm saying? I ain't keeping a PMA, a positive mental attitude. Mm. So when I got advanced, when I got into sales 17, 18, 19, I was already ready for the world because I learned this shit early. You feel oh, me? Oh, wow. Okay. So it's like when you like when you, when you you young, like my kids don't want for nothing, bro, but they go out making $1,500 a week mm. and they want to do the shit. Like if I take their phones from them, they don't get mad. If I take that video game, they don't get mad. But I'll be like, hey, you ain't going knocking on no doors and making no money. They start crying. Mm. I got different type of animals, you know what I'm saying, in my household. Wait, you made your first million dollars last year. Two, yeah, because Timberland ago. became my manager in October 2022. From to October 2022 to like um, October 2023, mm -hmm. I made a million dollars with him. Like, because he started booking. He was helping me get booked. I'm going to speak. I made probably like 400K just off speaking gigs. Mm. Like, so I was wait, traveling, what? companies paying me 50K, 30K, to like Eric Thomas and them do. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking at like companies, you feel me? Then I'm, I'm making money off social media. I got like, I own percentage of Pink Miracle, so I'm like part owner. So I go do a video. So my model right now is I went from knocking on people's doors to people knocking on my door. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because I can go do a video and I can make money in my sleep because TikTok got, you know, TikTok um, the creator yeah, fund, yeah, a shop yeah. where you can mm -hmm. put your product on there and they will buy your product off it just watching the video. You mm -hmm. feel me? Yeah. Like I remember one time I woke up to a video had like seven million views. I made like twenty k in one day Damn. off of just views. Like it wasn't even the views; it was off the product that got sold. And then YouTube got it now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where well, you could like it's like the e-commerce of social media. No nah, facts. You know it's crazy. It's, it's different because like usually people that come from where we come from, we do everything so our child, our children don't have to go through what we went through, right? Right. Or they don't have to do what we had to do to get to where we at. Right. And it's funny, it's like you is the opposite. Like now you making so much money, your kids probably don't have to do door to door yeah. sales, but now you want. No, but they, it ain't, see, this the thing. I live through my kids. Like I, one thing about me, bro, I wanted to go to the NBA so bad because I had an uncle that go to, went to the NBA. And when he went to the NBA, he moved to Australia, married an Australian, and he left like, he didn't even, you know what I'm saying? Like he only, we only seen him, I've seen him like two times in my life, probably like when he came for like a, like a, a mini family reunion. And then he came when my grandma died, which is his mom, because like, 
it's like they say when you get money, people change. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, you change. You know, no, I mean, the people, people really you. change. Because I see how my family is now. Like my brother, you know what I'm saying? Because you know what I mean? My grandmother told me this on her deathbed and my mentor told me this too. Like the person that got me into door-to-door sales. He said, it ain't your fault if you was born poor. But if you over the age of 18 and you die poor, that's your fault because you have something to do with that. So like, that's why every day above water, like it's people on earth right now that like, like one thing I learned from Zig Ziglar, he said, as soon as a person get a job, they quit looking for work. So a lot of people looking for excuses while other people looking for opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Like Thomas Edison said, if you think you can, you're right. If you think you can't, you still right because I'm your thoughts. So what I try to do is I try to make sure that I try to inspire. I, I'm going to make people laugh, of course, off my videos, but people don't know that what it took for me to get this far. You know what I'm saying? But the key thing, like I told you, it was not quitting. Mm. Like, my whole thing, this whole journey, I've been doing this. Like, bro, I've been doing door-to-door sales since I was 12 years old, and I'm 40. So I got, like, 28 years of doing this. This I was born to do this. You feel what I'm saying? But the thing is, is, like, I wanted to go to the NBA. That was my passion. Before sales, my number one thing was NBA basketball. You feel me? And when my grandmother died, like, I, I ain't even want to play basketball no more. How I got back into sales is because, like, I enjoyed it. That was my happiness. You know what I'm saying? Because my grandmother, she the one got me to knock on doors when I wasn't playing basketball. You feel me? Mm. Like, I'm stealing from her. I remember one day, I, one day I stole from her, and she, I got everybody in the house ass whooped. Because mm. I was lying. Like, I ain't still. She even took up for me. Like, oh, my grandson ain't still nothing. I'm looking like, yes, I did. Like, you mm. know what I'm saying? Everybody. So, and I felt bad when I was like, bro, I can't do this. You know what I'm saying? And she told me, like, she told me, like, on her deathbed, I swear to God, like, she was, um, that, that saying that I just told you. So, like, my kids, I got all my kids playing basketball because I'm trying to get my lick back. I'm like, I ain't go to the league. One of my kids going to make it. I'm looking at like if LeVar, LeVar Ball had two and a half go to the NBA, I can get five of them mm. out of ten. But your kids you know looking at you like, I want to do that. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying because that that was my lick. But that's what I, my point is that I ain't like I don't I, my I ain't I'm not living my dream through my kids no more. I want them to live their own dream. Mm. Like a lot of my kids love basketball, but most of my kids love sales. Like right now as we speak, we working on a TV show. We already had people come out from like Netflix to come shoot a sizzle and everything because we like we starting like a whole reality show. Like because my all my kids go door to door. I got mm. a 19 year old to a two year old. Even a two year old about to start going. On her big wheel. She the only one that ain't went door to door yet. But all my other kids go door to door. Yo, ain't it crazy how like, because I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that you've been through this, right? Like you enjoy something, but people don't understand it because it's new, yeah. right? Like so coming yeah. up again, door to door was something that we yeah. down. See, me we, and you, we have a conversation and we can relate. But if we had this with a nine to five or a person that never did it, it'd go over their head like a fitted cap. They'd be like, what the hell are they talking about? They nah, won't even facts. know the lingo we talking about. Yeah. You feel me? But even like peers though, right? Like not even, let's just say not even nine to five people. Let's say peers. Because I'm I'm listening to you and you like, man, I enjoyed this, right? This is something that I enjoyed. I went back to door to door because I, I love to do this. Whereas though you might tell your friends and they like making fun of you. Like, no, they would. Like, huh? I swear to God. That, that's what they're, they're like. This dude go door to door. I'm talking about, bro. That's what I'm saying. Like right now, like even if you have a nine to five, like the door to door back in the day, they was like calling me corny. You mm-hmm. a clown. Nigga, you knocking on people's door. You cleaning shoes. Like they was saying crazy stuff. And I'm looking at like, okay. But if we look at my bank account, look at yours, you're going to probably want to do the same thing we I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Nah, facts. But the thing is now... Like, I remember back in the day, people wanted to do anything to get some money. They wanted to work, get a nine to five. I remember my mama had two, three jobs. You feel me? Now, you corny if you work a nine to five. This is how social media then put out in the world, like, in the universe, to, like, they don't even want you to work. You mm-hmm, feel me? Mm-hmm. That's a fact. So it's, like, it's different. No, I, that's a fact. I swear to God, people was clowning me. Like, but I didn't listen to people. I was, like... I ain't listen to nobody because at the end of the day, I was my biggest fan because I learned that. I learned self-confidence. I learned self-esteem. I had high expectations, all of that as a young age. That's why I say when you do it younger, you build that confidence younger. Mm. But if you start doing it grown, like 19, 20, 25, 30, then you're going to get like discouraged. Yeah, you're going to mm-hmm. get sensitive. You're going to get emotional because you already grown. Yep. And you listening to that. You yep. know what I'm saying? Like I even got kids like that. My son, like he's Funny Salesman Junior. He got my whole name. And I got my younger kids out doing him. You know what mm. I'm saying? Because he started doing door-to-door sales when he was like six or seven. But then he got back to his mom. His mom was like, no, you got to do, you know what I'm saying? Got him out of that. So it's like the ones that I got under the roof with me now, it's like if I tell them a mosquito can pull a truck, they ain't going to question the orders. They just going to hook it up. They know mm. damn well a mosquito can't pull a truck, but they going to listen because they already know that oh, my daddy right. Even if he wrong, he right because I see what he doing and he showing us better than he could tell us. Now I got my son 
his friends, because he's 18 now, so his friends like, oh, you going door to door? Oh, that's weak, man. You better go get this girl, man. You know you is. You know your dad. So he like using my fame and this to go mess with a girl or go, you know what I'm saying, hang out with his homeboys, go smoke weed. And I'm like, bro, you a star. Why you doing this? None of them, if you go to jail right now, none of them ain't going to be able to get you out. Mm -hmm. If you get this girl pregnant right now, you can't even take care of yourself. How you going to get, but you can go to the league though. God bless. Then you have 55 points. Mm -hmm. Look at your IQ. Like this, this is not, this is a gift. Everybody don't just wake up and score 55 points. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like I'm 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 but I'm I'm planting this seed in him. But as long as I keep on like planting that seed in him and I keep him away from that, he'll be all right. But it's like I don't have to do that with my little kids. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause they but, like they looking at me like I'm their hero. He looking they at me like, no, nah, I'm getting older now. Like I ain't that little kid no more. You get what I'm saying? So now kids are super impressionable. I feel like with the oldest one, and it's something that I, I've been talking about a lot, I feel like as a being a parent. The hardest thing for me being a parent is understanding and, and, and accepting that my kid is going to have to go through their own thing. They're going to yeah, have to learn their fact. own lessons. Yeah. Because in my mind as a parent, as an adult, it's like, I did all this for you. I don't want you yeah. to have to. I know that yeah. you're a star. I know you don't need to mess yeah. with these women. I know yeah. I know that you don't have to put your hand on a stove to know that it's hot. Yeah. So to say, I'll tell yeah. you that. Yeah. However, also being an adult is understanding that or being a parent is understanding that they might just have to touch the stove. Just for them to experience it themselves. Yes. No, that's a fact. It's nothing I can do no. to. Then, no, you 100% right. Because that's what I told all my kids. Like, my kids, they was getting cars at 14, 15 years old. We had to steal cars. I didn't get my first car until I was like 24, 25. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And that's something like, I'm like, y'all spoiled. And it's like the more you spoil the kids, the more lazier they get. And it's mm -hmm. like they ain't got to work for nothing. I'm like, nigga, I had to steal. I had to hit licks. I had I was getting guns pulled out on me, getting locked in gas stations with axes and knives, by getting kidnapped by Indians. Like, you don't even know, like, like knocking on doors. We got stories. Like, I... Like, before I went viral, I got kidnapped by Indians with, at gunpoint. Mm. Then knocked on Jamie Foxx's door. Then sold his neighbor that was racist that thought I was trying to break in her house. Then she recorded me. So they don't understand this. I'm like, bro, I went through a lot to get where I'm at today. Mm -hmm. Y'all think this is just easy? You know what I'm saying? I show you somebody successful. I show you that they got a, a, a success story. Mm -hmm. no, you know what I'm saying? This shit ain't just come overnight. Like, I ain't just wake up and was funny salesman. You feel me? Mm. You think people uh, look at you and think that, though? Because I know that Yeah, be no, that's too. what they do. Even how people ask me for stuff. Mm. Like, nowadays, people, like, they think money grow on trees. Like, they just supposed to, like, just bump it to you, and you're supposed to just give them stuff. Because nah, they know you, you know what I'm saying? You know what And else? then the thing is that if you, like, like I get, every time somebody asks me something in my family, I give it to them. Like, I didn't give them some, but as soon as you get them that mm. one no, it's they'll over. try to throw you under the bus. Nah, you used to stay with me, we were sleeping on the floor with roaches, and we was, uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm looking at like, damn, we ain't doing that right now, though. Nah, facts. Like, this one time I get to say no, I'm all of this. Mm hmm. Like, you feel me? You can so get somebody something a hundred times, and yeah. one time you say no, you're no, the worst person in the world. I swear to God. That's you, crazy. you know what else that, I, I, like, I'm not a fan of, I'm not gonna say I don't like. Is I don't know if you go through this because like you 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 post your stuff on Instagram and things like that. Like your friends that hit you and be like, "Yo, do a video with me." Like you don't got nothing going on. It don't make yeah. no sense for me to do a video. Like what the fuck is you talking about? It's like, and with all due respect to my friends, but it'd be like, "Yo, you should no, do an I, interview with me." Like why, why, <laughs> why, bro? Like why? No, I swear to God, what? you ain't lying. I swear to God, dog. No, I got high school <laughs> friends that hit me up. Like, yo, let's I'm do a like, video. bro, how I'm going to do a video with you? You only got a job. <laughs> like, what, what kind of video we about to do? Oh, like, man. Like, I swear to God. Yeah, no, you, that's a super fact. I swear to God. Bro, I just yeah. had that happen to me last week. Nigga, like, yo, let's do a video. No. I like, swear to God. Like, no, that's I, a fact. And then it's crazy because after that Boosie thing happened, that's how people, they they react to me. They don't do me like Boosie did you. I'm like, mm -hmm. what? <laughs> oh, that, that's gaslighting like a motherfucker. Boy, they like, yo, don't do me like Boosie. I swear to God, dog. Like I didn't heard it all, bro. That was crazy. crazy. You know, I swear to God, it's funny, bro. Yo, yeah. you know it's funny, man. Um, people always ask me, like, yo, like, um, you don't ever want to quit. You don't ever want to quit. Like, keep you going. And it's, it's, you made me think about this. Like, consistency is really key. Nah. No, and it's, and it's like I, I tell my, I tell all my friends, I tell them this. It's like, yo, when I, when I'm not motivated, I, I get consistent. Yeah. And what happens is I tell them, I, I tell them this. I, I'm curious to see your, your experience. Like when I don't feel like doing an interview, when I don't feel like editing, I do more interviews, I do more editing. Because yeah. what happened is when everything is going bad, when I keep going, it's something that happens that gets me remotivated. No, that's right? a fact. Like, I, have you ever been through that where it's no, like, you might not fact. have felt like I, I knocking tell, on I doors? I tell people all the time, like, what you see is not real. What you don't see, that's what's real. Because mm. what you don't see is, is preparing you for you to, like, just 
take off like mm-hmm. to the next level. And that's why I tell people all the time, like I, I say right next door to um adversity is success. Yeah. Right next door to failure is success. Mm-hmm. Success is neighbor is 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 um failure neighbor. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like like right, I'm talking about, I swear to God on my mama, bro. I'm talking about like I was doing super video. I was doing like 12 to 15 videos a day. Wasn't making no money. I got 10 kids. I got miles to feed. You feel me? That's why, you know what I'm saying? I love what the Migos said. I'd rather be rich than famous. Cause I got all these people asking me to take pictures, this and that. I'm looking at like, bro, I'm, Where my I'm money? famous. <laughs> and I in, in tw- 2019, I like I, I was in depth like uh, like 7K. Like, you know what I'm saying? I moved with my, my 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 mom and my sister sleeping on, on on a floor, bro. You feel me? And I got a video that had almost a billion views, bro, and ain't get a dollar. Mm, you mm, feel mm. me? That's why I was mad at the lady because I did try to sue her because she posed a break bread like the Last Supper. Like, you just made all this money off me. You ain't even give me a dollar. And in the video, you got a deal. You got a discount. Can I get it for 30 And it was $36. She shorted me and everything. Wait, so, for the people that don't know, hold on. Let's slow down. Let's rewind because we just... We we talking because we know the conversation. We know the story. So basically, what happened was, um, you knocked on the lady door. You was trying to sell her something, yeah. and she recorded you. She asked you because you recorded. Well, give us the story for the people that yeah. don't know. No, that that's what <laughs> happened. Like I, I like I said, I had knocked on Jamie Foxx's door, and we was working like a predominantly white area. It was a rich area. This was back in 2010. This was like if you do your research when the Django happened, the movie the Django. That's when he was filming the Django. He stayed Django, in like nigga. Django. Oh, Django. Okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, like Ebonics. Five that's the Detroit Public Schools. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. So yeah, well, um, we was working in Tarzana. You feel me? And he stayed in Tarzana at the time. And I ended up selling him. And then I went and knocked on a neighbor door and she came out with a camcorder. And she was just recording me. But I'm I'm so locked in with sales that I'm trying to sell her. I ain't even like look at I ain't know it was I was getting recorded. I just knew I, so by that time I got done selling Jamie Foxx. You feel me? She done uploaded it. It's going crazy. The next day, I'm writing like 50. I'm going from writing six, seven, 10 sales, 15 sales a day to writing 60, 70 sales. Mm. I went from making like $1,500 a week to making like $3,000, $4,000, like $5,000 just off of sales that's tripling. The, you know what I'm saying? Because people are like, oh, I just saw you on YouTube like going crazy. But you, feel you said me? she had asked you because you recorded. Yeah, you know? no, but this is what happened. So like when she recorded me, right? I went viral 2010. I didn't find out till 2017. How I found out, because it show ridiculousness, they reached out to the company, you feel me? And they emailed me. It was like they wanted to pay me $150 to come on their show and talk about how the video went viral. But they ended up paying the lady like 25 k for copyrights to the video. So then when I searched up the video, this one I really was locked in. And I found out, I'm like, I see. This is how I knew the video went crazy because... When I searched up the video, the original video had like six to eight hundred million views, not six hundred thousand, not not eight million. This has six hundred, eight hundred million. Mm. This twenty seventeen. But when I searched the video, it was like hundreds of the same video. Like you, you could tell when it's a great video because everybody trying to monetize off this one video. Yeah. Except, I didn't know. You feel me? Except for me. So anyway, to make a long story short, right. So I reached out to the lady the first time, and she was like ignoring me, boom, boom. So then I went and got an entertainment lawyer, so I tried to sue her, and that's when they told me that I couldn't sue her because they replayed the video. They was like, you see this part right here? They paused it. And she was like, can I put this on YouTube? And I was like, yes, ma'am. She was like, what you selling? I was like, personality. And they stopped it. They was like, remember, see that part? You gave her the consent that you couldn't, you know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. And then that's how, so this was crazy, right? So after that happened, right, this was really locked me in to quit my sales job and to take social media fully serious, right? Like to make it like my nine to five. So when that happened, that was like 2017. So 2018, I moved, I quit my sales job. I moved to LA. I'm like homeless and shit. Like I'm going to different open mics. Com- I'm doing stand up comedy. I'm confused. I'm trying. So I go to 1600 Vine. This was like Vine was popping. Remember Vine back in the day? It had already stopped. But at this time, all influencers were staying at this apartment building on 1600 Vine. Mm-hmm. Like the late Logan Pauls, the Jake Pauls, the King Batches, the, you know what I'm saying, the Hannah Stockton, all of the like the, the Viners, like the back in the day, they were staying there, um, Daystorm, all of them, they were staying there. So I'm going to them getting information like, bro, how you monetize boom? Because everybody knew me. They're like, bro, you the OG salesman, bro. We watched you for years, you know what I'm saying? But I'm looking at like, bro, how you monetize, how you make money? They was like, bro, you got to start your YouTube channel. You got to, they was like, if I do, I'll screen record that video, post it on your own thing. They was like, you, but you just start over, do your own thing. So that's when I got on social media. The first thing I up Upload it was like Facebook and Instagram because at the time Instagram was still doing like pictures. Mm-hmm. They didn't even have like the videos and stuff yet. So then 2019, they started doing the videos. 2020, 
musically end up buying TikTok, remember? Yep. So it, uh, they they changed it to TikTok. I got on TikTok 2020. 2021, I grew, I went, I went from no followers 2020 to like the end, like the beginning. Like I got on t um TikTok like the summertime 2020 by like December, like the end of 2021, I had like 2.6 million followers. So like a year, year and a half, I get, I generated like my platform, the fastest growing. I'm saying this for anybody out there listening, the fastest growing. If you want to grow your organic followers, is TikTok is the fastest like growing platform because I grew 2.6 million followers. And when I tell you I started my Facebook and Instagram in 2018 and I had like 80K for two years. Mm. When I generated them 2.6 million, all of my followers from TikTok went to Instagram. So mm. I went from like 80K in two years to 600, 700K on Instagram. Damn. So they all follow me from there. You get what I'm trying to say? And then the next year, Timberland reached out. He was like, bro, you a genius. I don't know what it is. I just want to work with you. Boom. Then he reached out to me to like January 2022. Because like the end of 2021, I had 2.6 million. Every video I'm posting going viral. I'm posting 10 to 15 videos a day. Like I said, I'm still not making no money. Timberland reached out to me. He, I fly to... Um, well, actually, I drove. Like I told you, I drove from... I, I came here first, then I drove from Detroit, like 22 hours, went to Timberland House. We did like eight videos. We did collabs. We posted it. Like, the end of 2022, he's like, bro, who managing you? I was like, nobody. He started managing me. Then after that, you start seeing me do videos with all the celebrities, Wiz Khalifa, um, you know, Waka Flocka to Cam Newton to all of this was because of Timberland, Damian Lillard. Everybody started reaching out to me and... Like I, I it, my life just changed overnight off that. You feel me? Damn. That's how it happened. Cause I, he was the first celebrity I did a video with, and after that I didn't did Little Pump, Rowdy Rich, Will, Rich Homie Quan, rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? Everybody they start reaching out cause of Timberland. You feel me? Yeah. And then that's when these big companies start reaching out for brand deals, podcast people to, you know, like it was crazy. Now that's you said how. like we we joked about how uh, people say don't do me like Boosie did you. Um, well, I guess for the people that don't know. Exactly. Can you explain what happened with the, you and Boosie? Yeah, so, um, so, like I said, I'm already going viral. I'm doing different celebrities, you feel me? I already did Timberland. I didn't did Damian Lillard. I, I'm doing going crazy. So, all of my videos that I did with different celebrities, they actually either approached me or their manager approached me or I approached them and they was like, yeah, let's do a video. This <clears> particular <throat> time... Boosie had a movie that was premiering with my my boy. Shout out to um Million Million Dollar Key. They was doing a video together. He from like out I here. Know, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's my dude. But he hit he hit me up. He was like, bro, I'm doing a movie premiere. I want you to be my Million Dollar Key from Baltimore, I think. Yeah, he he probably is, but he was out here yeah, at the yeah, time. Yeah, my yeah. bad. You yeah, know yeah. he is. I think yeah. he is. Yeah, you're right. So anyway, they him and Boosie had a movie yep. with like Rich Homie Quan. Yep. They had a movie premiere. You feel me? Out here. So I drove out here to come to it. And then my boy ATM, that's uh Boosie manager, you know what I'm saying? He was like, bro. He was like, Boosie having a birthday party after the movie premiere. I want you to pull up. He was like, don't say nothing. We're going to set it up to, we're going to have you do a skit. you just going to knock on the door. We want it organic. We don't even want you to tell him. You feel me? Because we want to see how his face going to look. But anyway, ATM never came. You feel me? Oh, so I'm calling him, though. And he, he thinking like it's set up. So anyway, I'm trying to figure out, because I'm seeing Boosie, he like occupied. Because he it's his party. He hosting it. He partying, having a good time. So there's one particular time I caught him. And I'm like, bro, I'm about to just ask him. He was like, no, I just knock on the door. So I knocked on the door and then I walked right in and tried to sell him and he wasn't having it. He was like, what? No, you got to pay me. You know what I'm saying? And then they, people seen a clip. And then after that, man. It's crazy because like, um, as unfortunate as it is, I understand because people like, like, and no disrespect, but people like Boosie, who's not still making like music or going on tours and things like that. A lot of his money come from like, um, like, uh, promo, promo and, and, yeah, yeah. interviews no, and shit no, like that. No, so, yeah. I understand, no, right? I, like, man, you probably don't want to hear that. Even more. Man, no, I, bro, I'm a businessman. I've been like this since 12 years old. So I didn't even get mad. What I did is that I got motivated. Mm. I got more hungry. I said, now nah, I got to really turn all the way up. Because mm. the next time he see me, he going to want to do a video. Because I'm pretty sure I seen him do a video with Desi Banks, DC Young Fly. I'm like, I've been viral before them, but they've been way more consistent than me. Mm. He ain't pay. You I know, you know yeah, he yeah. ain't say you got to pay me to do it. That just motivated me to keep going. Oh, wow. Bro, you got to understand. I remember I went on Drewski. I'm going to tell you a little story about Drewski. And I messed with Drewski. I went on could have been record thing like my boy Jack Funny. And I went on there and he turned me down and he was acting like he ain't know who I was or nothing. Then I just seen him at the BT where he's like, bro, you going crazy. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, bro, I was just on could have been record. He's like, you was? So people look over you because you ain't really... But when I start doing 15, 20 videos a week and I'm in everybody's face, now they like, you feel me? 
You get what I'm trying to say? Because mm-hmm. that's like even a little baby situation, bro. I met little baby like two times before. He's like, bro, I'm a fan of you. And I'm looking at like, bro, I remember one time, like, I was in the store. I pulled out my phone, and one of his boys like tried to smack the phone on my hand. They thought I was trying to record him. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then like it was just like we was in L.A. though. You feel me? And I like you know what I'm saying. And he ain't even he ain't even know I was a dude that like clean. You know what I'm saying? It's just that like people don't really know. You so you don't never take like none of it personal because some no. I be bro. I've been like we, bro, we still human. We got feelings. You know why? Because I got tough skin. I'm from Detroit, Michigan, and I know how to fake it till I make it. And at the end of the day, I done knocked on racist people's door where they was like, get off my porch, nigger. I said, where that nigga at? You owe me $5. Mm. And they bust out laughing and bought my product. So I already know when I'm in Rome, do as a Roman. It's like, I, and then I ain't go, ch- just because a person nasty or they overlook me, I'm not going to overlook nobody. I ain't go, you know what I mean? That's why I get my blessings because I don't shit on the small people. You feel me? Because nobody's small to me. You know what I'm saying? We all... Got 24 hours in our day. We all put our pants on the same way. Just like the, uh, Wallow said, he said, as soon as you get up and you wake up and God bless you to see another day, you got another opportunity to chase your dream. So why would I try to shit on somebody else for trying to chase their dream mm-hmm. when we all and on this earth for one purpose, and that's to be great. You get what I'm saying? Mm. But a lot of people, they don't understand that. No, facts. But from that situation, you said uh, Rich Homie Kwan saw it. Yeah. He saw, like, uh, uh, I guess. you. So wait. You posted that video. Was, I'm gonna be honest. After that Boosie incident, that's why I really mess with Rich Homie because I swear to God, he was the first person that reached out to. But wait, so before we get to Rich Homie, so did you still post a video? Yeah, the nigga, oh. his manager, ATM. Like I swear to God, I because I DM'd him first. I sent him the video. I was like, it ain't go too well because he wasn't there. Remember I told you yeah. he was like because he's like from like Dallas. He's somewhere in Texas. He was like, damn man, I ain't gonna be able to make. It. He was like, but still try to get the video. I was like, all right, bet. But he was like a super fan. He was like, bro, I've been watching you a hustler. He was like, Boosie gonna respect you too because he a hustler too. Because like even like when I met Rick Ross two. A lot of the hustlers, they respect other hustlers. They even told me, like, bro, you just, you one of a kind, bro. You got your own lane, and that's what I like about you with your content. So I'm thinking, like, he going to respect the hustle. He going to, like, you know what I'm saying? But when I sent ATM, his manager, the video, because I was like, bro, it ain't go too well. He said, you got to post this. This going to really go. He was mm-hmm. like, this He was like, this all you need. Yeah. He was like, and this is his manager saying that, you feel me? He wasn't saying it to make me, Boosie, look bad. It's to show like, nigga, this about to go viral because you never got turned down on your video. This the, this the most organic shit you ever done. Mm. The first video that I ever did that generated the most views of my whole career had almost a billion views because it was organic. I didn't wake up one day and say, hey, I want to go viral and knocked on a lady door that was racist and she recorded me. I was really doing my job that I really love to do you feel me because I eat sleep and drink it and the years later look the whole world love me you feel me I got people that like real A-list celebrities don't even want to say their name but they be like bro you inspire me and I'm looking like damn mm. I remember when I first met Chief Keith. he was like bro you know I mess with you he was like could you make killers laugh mm. you know what I'm saying I'm looking at like that's crazy you know what I'm saying this person that I looked up when I like when I just got FaceTime with Meek Mills I just told him like bro I was down there about to cry because I'm like, bro, you like you was a big inspiration part of when I was homeless going door to door, mm-hmm. listening to Dreams of Nightmare. Now I'm on FaceTime with you. You know what I'm saying? No, that shit don't happen every day. You feel no, me? Fact, to be yeah. in these rooms with these people just for me loving my job. Bro, I was just at the BET Awards. Two chains reached out like, bro, I'm going to put you on my video. Mm. On my set. Bro, I remember we used to hit the TV to fucking... Make the TV come on to watch the BET Awards. I'm right here front row watching the BET, a little kid from Detroit, Michigan, that just believed in himself because his grandma knew, saw so many that the world didn't see. Not a world starting to see it. You feel me? Mm. And, and that's motivational because it's, you never know. It's crazy how, like, something that may seem like a negative is a positive. Like, Boosie right. saying that, right? Yeah. That could that could discourage somebody making want to yeah. quit and not, not do but nothing Boosie, else. Boosie, I understand him. He, a big, yeah. he got a lot of but kids, I'm saying, but, even, but that video See, people, that's because that's, that's, that's on the outside looking out. And that really made me grind even more. I said, yes. That's why everybody that, like, look, like, like I just told you with the Detroit rappers, bro. You feel me? I'm going to all of these. I'm like, boom, let me do a video. Let me, because I'm a hustler, bro. I ain't trying to do it for no money. This is what I love to do. I love making content because this is me. This is me. You feel me? And it was like, I understand you busy. I understand this, that. But little baby looked at it like, bro, why you ain't asking me? I'm a fan. Mm. And did the video in front of all of them. You feel me? Yeah. I didn't get discouraged and get mad at them. Like, oh, I don't mess with y'all. You know what I'm saying? I still do a video. But at the moment, I was like upset because I'm like, damn, this is my, my city. city. We supposed yeah. to put each other on. We supposed to help each other out. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. But I ain't get discouraged to be like, I don't mess with them. I still didn't download everybody's album that was out there that day. You feel me? 
Yeah. Still rock with their music, still support them because I like I'm one within and I, and I know my purpose on this earth. You feel me? And I know that I got millions of people that smile every day and can look up to me and be like, you know what? If he can make it, I can make it. Mm. If he made it out the hood, well, you don't gotta go shoot nobody, you ain't gotta rob nobody, you ain't gotta steal, you ain't gotta kill, you ain't gotta sin, and you out here chasing your dream, I could do the same thing. You feel no, me? Thanks. And it's all from social media. So that's why social media be like the gift and the curse. But most of my content I'm putting out, I'm trying to inspire that little kid that just lost their mom. Mama, mm. That probably don't want to live today. I'm trying to inspire that little kid that you know what I'm saying that he don't got he in a shelter right now. You feel me? Mm. And he hopeful. He hopeless. You know what I'm saying? He don't know what his next meal gonna be. You feel me? Because I was one of them kids. I was one of them kids that didn't know how my next meal. And my mama, she worked her butt off. She worked two, like she worked eight days a week. Had two jobs, provided everything for us. But it's we like when we when we was younger, it's we wanted to get well, certain food. We wanted McDonald's every day, a Burger King every day. My mama couldn't afford it. We wanted Jordans, and you know what I'm saying? Like we grew up like. We used to get clothes from a good fella box. You know what I'm saying? People don't know about Focus Hope Food. You know what I'm saying? You making peanut butter and a bread tearing up. You feel me? To make We eating beef stew every day and fucking salmon correct. Like, people don't know about that. My kids don't know about that struggle. You feel me? Mm. We used to go to schools just to get free lunch because nice. we couldn't eat in the morning. Yeah, we would nice. go to church. Nigga, I play hockey. I, one of my favorite sayings is that, you know, our black people don't play hockey because we already skating on thin ice. I used to go to ice hockey in Detroit just to get free lunch, my nigga. Mm. Mm. No, that's a fact. That's crazy. That's crazy. So wait, I want to ask you this. Hold up. So you post the Boosie thing. That go crazy. Rich homie Quan reach out to you. Like, yeah, the next day. I sort of got, I'll show you the DM. Now I'm down there about to cry, bro, because it's like, like that, like when he, like, that's what I said. When he passed, though, he was like a real dude because, like, he reached out and he was like, bro, I mess with your videos. And, like, I seen him. It's like I drove straight to Atlanta. I swear to God. Like, when somebody, and I met him at Lennox Mall. We was at Lennox Mall and we chopped it up. And then he sent me his location. And then I pulled up on him and we chopped it up for like an hour, two hours before we even did a video. He's like, bro, I mess with your videos. And we just was chopping it up. You feel me? I met his brother, Dre, and we just was talking. And then after that, we just, we did the video. But everybody else I did a video with, I ain't do that with them. Mm -hmm. We just did a video. It was one and done. Boom. You know what I'm saying? I, if I bump it to you again, that's a blessing. But if not, we just did a video. It was like business. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like with certain. But he was like the first person that reached out. And I was like, damn, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Because even when that happened, I was getting like, people was, they was talking crazy. Like, man, you know, you know what I'm saying? They was tripping. But with Boosie, people weren't tripping. Boosie wouldn't even trip. I just seen them at Rick Ross and even stopped the car. And his people, they was like, that go to do right. And he smiled at me like, you know what I'm saying? So I could tell he was like, you know what I'm saying? Now nah, he like. And it's like, I'm telling you, I know for sure without a shot of a doubt, he probably saw me more because that's how my mindset was. I was like, watch, I'm about to make him see me every day after this. He going to see me so much. The next time he he he, he see me, he going to probably feel bad that he ain't even do a video with me. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because that's how I look at it. One thing my mentor taught me, and shout out to Donald Davis, he taught me the best revenge is master success. You yep, know what I'm saying? 100%. So that I don't even get mad. So when you posted it, did that, that, that went viral, I'm assuming. Yeah, I posted it because his team told me to post yeah, it. But that it went viral. jump went crazy. Yeah. Everywhere. World Star, everybody posted it. So Rich Homie Quan, like, yo, he hit you, he felt bad or he just, because it's I don't it know, he just saw the video and he was like, bro, he just, he told me, he was like, bro, I, he was like, I love your content. I've been watching you for a minute. He was like, he then he asked, he's like, was that real? I was like, yeah. And he was like, man, that's crazy. He's like, man, he was like, he was like, man, I want to do a video. I'm a fan. He was like, I ain't going to do that, though. He was like, but let's do one. You feel mm. me? And then we did it, and it went crazy. It like, went crazy. It hit like three million in like a week. You Sheesh. feel me? Then World Star, everybody posted that. It went super crazy. What the hell? Just you selling them? The, yeah, I just went to his house, and then I pitched him, and then, yeah, he went crazy. Sheesh. It's crazy how, um, that's one thing, and I know we hear this a lot, but I really wish uh, Rich Homie Kwan could have got his flowers while he was here. Yeah, man, because I swear to God, that's another person, man. I was rocking with him. Bro, it's a lot of people that I was listening to when through my journey of struggling, going door to door, like with like being homeless, like and I cope with his music. You know what I'm saying? Differences to, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of songs that I listen to that got me back on point. Like one of my top was like Lifestyle, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Like just did that was some inspirational songs to let you know, like, bro, you can make it, you can change your family life. You know what I'm saying? He mm -hmm. did it. You feel me? Yeah. So then when I saw he had a big family too and he uh, he was a family person, I'm like, see, you know what I'm saying? And he 
he was he was a gifted dude. You feel me? Mm. People were like, you know what I'm saying? He he was like one of my like favorites. Like back in the 2009s and 10s, 11s, mm -hmm. when I went viral, I went viral 2010. That's when him and Thug, they was going yeah. crazy. You mm -hmm. feel me? The rich gang, they was going. And then he came out with type away. Like they was going crazy. They had it on lock for like a couple summers. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, thanks. But like, yeah, that's still reloaded. Like that whole album, I was bumping that like every day. You feel me? Mm. Yeah, you, you know, know it's, you know, it's, it seemed like it's crazy. You might, I don't want to say you might not agree, but it seemed like all of the, or the two, the two times that was probably like the most um, treacherous or biggest downfalls in your career was the things that big, that, that got you lit the most. One, the, the racist lady that put you on YouTube. Yeah, she made a lot of money, but you even said like you went from doing a couple sales a day to a lot of yeah, sales, yeah. right? Yeah, tripling so, up, man, it was crazy. Yeah, so next and like, that it turned was you up. Yeah. The Tom Boosie, um told you no, yeah. that turned you up. Yeah. So it's like every single time that something that seemed bad happened yeah. was really the spark in the next yeah. level of your career. No, that's a fact. That's crazy, man. Does that does, does that make you look at it differently now when you're going through adversity? No, nah, because, man, I look at life like a game, bro. It's like a game. You, you got to just play the game of life. You got to play in the game. You're going to take some losses. You're going to take some wins. You feel me? But mm. if you count your blessings, not your troubles, you're going to always be all right. That's the thing. People act like that they ain't going to have bad days. You feel me? You just got to make sure you have more good days than bad days. Mm. But you got to count them bad days because them bad days, them bad days going to make you the person you is. No, you facts. feel me? Yeah, yeah 100%. So. Yo, you, you mentioned um shortly about how, like, you was trying to do in the, the interviews with the Detroit rappers. And yeah, like they not was even like, interviews, it was just skits. Like skits, yeah. Because that's what I was finna say. Like the, with the Boosie situation, even with the Detroit rappers, a couple of them turned me down, then Lil Baby. That's probably my top video right now. Mm. That must hit like 50 million. You Damn. feel me? That's like my high. But, like Rich Homie Quan, it turned up like, you know what I'm saying? He reached out, boom, boom. We hit like 3 million in a week. But the the little baby went crazy. You feel yeah. me? That hit. On my TikTok, it hit like 12, 13 million. You feel me? Damn. It's like overall, it hit like 50 million, bro. So that's what I was going to ask. Like, I know, like you said, you always got this positive mindset, right? You're always confident. But it's something different about home. Yeah. Like, like that hits that hits different because, like, you always want to get love or show love to yeah. your hometown. No, because I do it, bro. You feel me? And I'm looking at, like, bro, I be showing love. And I, I love, like, I love all my Detroit. I'm even glad. Like, like, uh, but, like, I swear, Vezo, he did a video with me. Uh, I just ran into Peasy. Shout out Peasy. My, that's my dog. I did a video with GT. You know what I'm saying? I just ran into Babyface Ray. He's like, come on, we going to do it. But, like, the ones that I ran into, like, on occasion, like the Skiller Baby, the, uh, you know what I'm saying, the T Grizzly, you know what I'm saying, the 4 I know they be busy, but I'm looking at, like, bro, 5, 10, 20, 30 seconds, bro. We yeah. can, you feel me? We can get this Even if one and done. You feel me? Like, you nobody ain't too busy. Man, one thing my mentor told me, he said, he said, if it's worth it, they're going to find a way. Mm -hmm. If it's not worth it, they're going to find an excuse. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So maybe I wasn't worth it to them. You feel me? Because mm. you know what I'm saying? Like, I, like it ain't, it ain't going to take nothing to be, you know what I'm saying? No, nah, thanks. Cause that, I done seen people busy, bro. I'm talking yeah, about I'm in the studio they, with Wiz Khalifa, bro. He doing his whole album, bro. And his and, and shout out to Chevy Woods. He was Taylor Gang. You feel me? He mm -hmm. was a super big fan. He saw he was like, bro, I sent you Timberland. You know what I'm saying? He was like, bro, I'm gonna get you to do one with Wiz. Set it up and everything. I walked in the studio. Wiz ain't know what was going on. He doing an and he still album. Did it. But he was like, bro, this dude funny. I said a couple jokes. He's like, oh yeah, let's get it. Let's get it. He's like, and I've been working on my social media. I'm trying to get my junk going crazy because they are trying to do skits. Yeah, facts. Uh -huh. You feel me? They already bigger than life, bigger than what Oprah used to be, but they like, we going to play this game too. I want to play. I want to see how this content creation work too. You feel me? Mm. You know what I'm saying? I seen Casanet and fucking, you know what I'm saying? Offset video. And I'm looking at like, bro, I, I go to, you know what I'm saying? North Dakota. NLE Chopper, shout out to him and Lil Wayne. They hit me up to do a video. I'm looking at like, bro, Lil Wayne, my favorite rapper of all time. If Lil Wayne and NLE Chopper looking for me, why well, can't my own city do a video when I'm right there? You feel me? Mm. It's Lil Wayne. Nah, thanks. Lil Wayne gonna do a video with me, but I can't get one with Photo Doug. That you think that T was T Grizzly? You think that was Skiller uh, Baby? The, you think that was probably the one time that it stung the most? 
out of your whole career. I ain't gonna lie, that that messed me up. Like I was like, bro, that's crazy, bro. I ain't gonna lie, cause I worked super hard, and even my kids saw that. Like they turned, like Fo Two Dub turned my son down. Dog. It like it like I had to like install all type of more positive stuff in him, cause like he a little ten year old kid, bro, that love sales, and he almost got discouraged, cause look, like Fo Two Dub, like his favorite rapper. You feel me? Mm. He done rapped every song. He didn't put me up on songs I ain't, like World on My Shoulder to like you know what I'm saying. He know the whole song to pay. I'm like this. I'm, I I went. To tell Fo Two Dub like nigga, my son fell in the school because he loved your music. Mm. Damn, that's he, crazy. he don't even know his. He don't even know was eight times twenty six, but he know before I go broke like Jock. You know what I'm saying? Mess with that dog like he know the whole song, but he getting suspended for school because he, you know what I'm saying? Because he want to be cool like you, mm. and you couldn't even do it like you know what I'm saying. I damn near cry, but I mean, but this is what we got to go through. That's why I make sure, like, I teach my kids, like, look, as long as you got a hero like me, you ain't got to worry about nobody else because, like, you're going to be bigger than life. Just keep going. But I had to start a little bit of more confidence because it tore them down a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And they ain't nothing away from it because I, man, for, for today, that's my dog. You feel me? That's my dude. And I know they be busy. You feel me? But And then some niggas, they don't like social media, too. They, I mean, they like so, but they don't like, they don't want to be put on blast like that. Like I said, Boosie, he ain't want to be put on blast. Fo2 Dunn ain't want to get put on, because he did tell me, don't get it twisted. He's like, bro, come on, we're going to do a video. He's like, hey, what are we going to do? I was like, we going to clean it. And then my kids was so, like, my kids, one thing about me, they don't listen to, like, oh, oh, he said, hold on. Them mm. niggas hungry. You feel me? Yeah. Because they really, like me, I'm doing a video because I love social media. They doing a video because they really trying to sell you. Mm. This nigga want to go buy him some Jordans. Did this what he do? He like hey, this is a little job. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it broke his little heart. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, like, but if they if they turn turned around and tried to do it again, would you do it though? If do what? Like no, a video? in fact, even we saw photo Doug, He commented on the video like, bro, when, when you pull up on, he was like, well, um, when your son, he's like, I ain't even know that was your son, bro. He's like, have him pull back on me. I'm gonna buy twenty bottles. And then when we pulled up on him, that's when I did the skit with little baby. You feel me? Okay. My older son was trying to sell him. So and they, you got to understand, it be like the area too. You feel me? Like it was one time, Skiller baby turned me down. I had my son ask him. I was like, fuck it, he ain't gonna tell a kid no. I said, him go ask, can we do a video now? Because Polo G had came out to the city and he brought Polo G. Out. That's one thing. They bring Bring the, they bring the city out. You feel me? And he was like, man, not right now. But I knew they'd be busy. I seen it was kind of busy. But I'm like, he probably ain't going to turn my son down. But I know they'd be busy. But I looked at it too, like, with, you know what I'm saying? With my, man, my, my manager and my mentor and other people told me, they was like, if it's important, they're going to find time. a way. Facts. If it's an excuse, you know what I'm saying? If it ain't important, they're going to find an excuse. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I was just thinking, like, what if Funny Marco was right there? Or what if. That was Drewski. Or yeah, that we was did it. Yeah, for Desi sure. Banks. 100%. Like, man, you, uh, you know what I'm saying? But sometimes you got to take things. I'm, I'm going to be real. I don't know about you, but me. Sometimes, like, me taking it personal is really my motivation. Yeah. Like, it's really feeling. Man, I go crazy now, bro. I ain't going to lie. And then I know who backing me. I got Timberland, nigga. He's a mogul. Mm -hmm. He didn't diss a... I can call him any day. He going to give me advice. He going to tell me what to do. He mentoring me. He managing me. So I got him on my side. You feel me? No, like, facts. we was about to do a whole sale. He was about to hold, do a whole tour. You feel me? That we got on, we got put on hold right now because I got we got stuff. He just came off tour with Missy Elliott. I got stuff going on with the TV show with my kids. I got a lot of stuff going on too. So like like I, I know who I am and I know what what I what what I bring to the table and I know what's in the future that's ahead for me that people don't even know what's about to happen. Mm. Nah, man, this is good. Man. I appreciate you for pulling up and chopping it up with me, dog. For real. No, no, that's a fact. It's good. This was on some like just. Like, we ain't even know this is happening. We yeah. was outside, you was doing a skit with somebody, and like, yeah. it just, yeah. boom. Man, that's crazy, man. I appreciate you for real, nah, bro. I appreciate you. Uh, Kenny bro. Brooks, uh, Funny Salesman. I guess for the people that don't, everybody gonna know, but let them know how to follow you. You the big yeah. dog now. Yeah. You the nah, big yeah, dog now. Just, I'm all over the web like a tarantula, like Funny Salesman on all platforms. Yeah, man. I guess you wanna, uh, is there anything that you got coming out that you wanna let people know before we get out of here, or? No, I got like a lot of stuff that I can't really even talk about right now. So I guess oh, now gonna, you the one. Yeah, look, now yeah. no, he I'm the saying, celebrity now. Yeah, they gonna they gonna see it. That it's coming. It's coming soon. You know. Nah, what I'm saying? man, I appreciate you again, man. Yeah. Uh, Kenny Brooks, funny salesman, Mr. J Hill, J Hill podcast is rap. We out. <laughs>